Libra, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for January 2020 and first of all, welcome to 2020. We're here friends, we've made it. Let's get in here and see what this thing is about. Now I can tell you this month Libra, everybody's talking about it, the big Saturn-Pluto conjunction, and that is going to be a big deal, and it's going to play a big piece in your world and probably something in your domestic zone in some way, shape, or form. But we've also got a lunar eclipse that's going to be happening this month, putting some change, putting some change of direction, maybe putting a little emphasis on what's happening in your career zone. As well, we've got Uranus coming out of retrograde in the beautiful energy of Taurus, so in the eighth house, in a place of intimacy, truth, financial connections, joint connections, you're also gonna get some forward motion moving there as well. So I think it's gonna be an interesting month. Now before we jump in here, there's still space to sign up for the free forecast marathon that I'm doing with astrologyhub.com. You can click in the description box down below and use my link to get signed up. And we will be together the 9th through the 12th going over what's happening in 2020. Um, 12 different astrologers will be there. We will be talking about how you can make use of that. We'll be celebrating ceremony of the beginning of the year together. It's really a beautiful energy. So I hope that you do join and I look forward to seeing you over there. Okay. All right, Libra, let's jump in here and talk about what's going on. Okay. So as you can see first here from our little cosmic weather map that we've got going, the fourth house is a house of power. And if you've watched your annual forecast, you know that this is a house of power for the year. There's a lot that will be happening in it. But as we're here in January, keep in mind what we're crossing into 2020 with is the things that we've already seen. These things have already been on your table. You've seen them, you've been doing work on them, but now what you're gonna be doing is coming at them with a new perspective, new action, maybe even some new solutions. We've got a couple disruptive energies that may help bring some things to culmination for you as well. So this is gonna be where we're gonna do a lot of focus, but then you have other houses that will show up to help you make decisions in these areas as well. So right at the beginning of the month, we've got Jupiter and Mercury who are in conjunction here in your fourth house. Now the fourth house is the house of home, family, real estate, property, your own internal um, securities and foundations, parents, mothering lives in this area, somebody that maybe you care for. These could all be in this area as well. So as we're coming into 2020 and we see this area being lit up and we see Jupiter and Mercury talking to each other, this is a big deal energy, right? There's a big plan. There's a little something brewing down here that it's gonna need your attention as we go on through the rest of this month because Jupiter is the planet of the big idea, right? He doesn't care about any of the details. He's like, here's the thing. Let's make changes in the home zone. And Mercury's like, well, we need some details on how we're gonna get that done. We need to communicate. We need the knowledge of what are we trying to change here. So these two together tell you there's a big plan in place for this fourth house area for you. Now on the 3rd of January, Mars is gonna leave the comfort of being in Scorpio and move into the energy of Sagittarius, okay? So now you've got Mars over here working in the energy of Sagittarius lighting up your third house. Now Mars is action, energy, movement, go, let's do things. He's also a little bit of conflict, right? So here in Sagittarius, and in the third house, Sagittarius is an information gathering and sharing sign. And the third house is the house of our thinking, how we communicate, um, the things that we've learned, all of these kinds of patternings that we've got, and also some things about siblings as well. So with Mars here, something that could be happening is you are coming and into contact and experimenting with new ideas new learning, new courses, new courses of study. Because this is Sagittarian energy, you may be challenging your own thinking, your beliefs, your beliefs about things that are cultural, right? There's a lot of thinking and rethinking that could be happening here. Now with Mars here, Mars can be aggressive and assertive, and this could be Libra showing up this month ready to be assertive about things, ready to be a little bit more aggressive about decisions that need to be made, ready to sign contracts and paperwork about your housing. Things like this could definitely, you could see Mars helping here. Whatever Mars is helping you here, he has activated you into enough energy and enough movement to be able to get things done in this area. Now, if this does happen to be about study for you, you or writing. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal energy for you to defend something, right? Mars is here. He's here to win. So if you have to defend that dissertation, you have to defend that project or whatever it is that you're doing or you're writing that blog, this is a wonderful energy to explore with because it also means different people are going to see it and come in contact with your work as well. 
on the 8th of January, we have got Jupiter and the South Node that are going to actually come into conjunction with each other. And I want to tell you about that for a minute because I think it's important. Jupiter is expansion and he's wisdom. He's pure, beautiful wisdom. He's in the energy of Capricorn. So he's slowed down a little bit enough for us to all slow down and reflect. And we're reflecting on the South Node work, right? Over this last year, um, karmically, we've been asked, Libra, to make some adjustments to what's happening in this home, family, domestic zone. And that includes your own internal structures and foundations, right? So you've been asked to detach from some of these things. Do you have weird family relationships going on? Do you have dramas and traumas from the past? What have you been detaching from in this home area? For some people, it has literally been moving away from home and being prepared to work or stay or study or live in other places. But the energy has been asking you to detach. And the reason you would detach from it is because it's not serving the soul anymore. You are attempting to grow instead to this side, the northern side, the north node, which is the career. It's very public. It's your own expansion. It's your own work. It's your own dreams, right? But there's been something probably in the domestic zone that has kept you a little embroiled in whatever's going on at home. So with Jupiter and that south node together, it is a day and a time of reflection on the 8th and the 9th. What have you learned? What are you willing and ready to let go before you're trying to set these intentions of how you're going to move forward in this area? Remember, this is an area of focus this year, so it means you're going to look forward in it, you're going to look back, you're going to take action, you need to reflect. The 8th and the 9th are good reflection days, and then as we get to the 10th, you can move some things forward, okay? Speaking of the 10th, we're going to have a full moon lunar eclipse happening here at the top of your chart at 20 degrees of Cancer. Now with a lunar eclipse happening at the top of the chart, first of all, a lunar eclipse says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, right? But instead, because it's an eclipse, instead of it hitting you for four weeks, you're gonna have this information and these impacts for the next six months. Now this is at the top of your chart, so the first place we go is career, or what you do, or what you're known as out in the public area, right? So. With a lunar eclipse here, one of the things that I get the sense of because it is the moon and there's some emotion based in it is um, maybe you're having some emotional responses to your job. Maybe you're like, I just cannot come to this place anymore. I can't do this. Or even if it's the best job you've ever had in your life, if you are at a heart level feeling very unfulfilled with the work, I think you begin to make some changes. But the moon here also coincides very much so to a very busy fourth house. Have you had things in your home life, family life, emotional life that have kept you from being solid at work, right? Because in this area, what the moon is trying to do, what that north node is trying to do is get you recognized, get you seen at work, allow the um, workplace or out in the world community progress to progress. But there may be something down here that's been challenging the growth in the movement up here. So over the next six months, as you begin to work the detachment or you continue to work the detachment, um, information will present itself on this 10th and 4th house balance, which may show you some different things at work and at home. But I tell you, whatever it is with the work, if it's not absolutely nourishing who you believe you are and what you're meant to be doing, or even just nourishing you in terms of paying your bills, you will probably leave that work or that work will leave you if you are also not nourishing it as well. Because it is one thing to say, you know, in my soul, I feel like I'm called to do something else. And it is quite another thing to show up to the energetic body, which is a business and not treat it well. So then in that case, you would be the one who's kicked out as opposed to you being the one to kick that place out, if that makes sense. Okay, when we get to the 11th, we've got a couple things happening. First and foremost, Uranus is going to come out of retrograde in the energy of Taurus. Now, Uranus has been retrograde in Taurus in your eighth house since 2019. So when Uranus has been retrograde, he's been looking over this eighth house area for you. And one of the biggest things I keep getting the message of for you, Libra, in this eighth house is your own independence, standing on your own, going it alone, going it your own way, or certainly just maybe some kind of deep intimate connection and you've got a heavy fourth house. So maybe the connections to family or ideas of family or some kind of unit that you perceive to be important. Well, when Uranus was retrograde, he was showing, he was like, some of these structures don't work anymore. We can't live within these. We have to innovate here, Libra. We have got to innovate or die, honey, right? So he has been over here showing you 
looking over this area of your life, your finances, your joint connections to other people, your fears, your love of astrology, your work in any of the metaphysical places and showing you how to innovate. Now, as he's out of retrograde and traveling in his direct motion, what's gonna happen is he's gonna show you and help you understand what needs to change, what needs to go, what you need to keep because this area is going to be vital now that Uranus is traveling forward. Now you get to go make those innovations and some of those innovations I'm telling you will touch whatever's happening in this fourth house zone which will also touch work, okay? Also on the 11th or the 12th, just depending on where you live, we've got the Saturn-Pluto conjunction happening right here in this fourth house. Now, because Saturn and Pluto is such a slow evolutionary turn, you know, Saturn is saying, hey, Libra, I need you to die off in this way so that you can live in another way. It's a very Phoenix energy and Saturn's in board here and he's like, I'm gonna take you to the next level. We're gonna mature. We're gonna move this forward for Libra's greatest good. You're gonna fit into the vision of the life that you think you wanna have and you're also gonna fit into the vision of the lessons you just have in this lifetime, whether you like them or you don't, right? So in some way, shape or form, they're asking for an apt amount of maturity or care or something happening here. Now, one of the things I continue to think of with this being in the fourth house zone for you is a couple things. Saturn and Pluto can feel a little bit like loss. It feels like something is missing or something is going or something's being taken away, right? And that loss does not last forever because the universe never leaves a hole. Whatever is taken or feels like you need to be making changes here, the rest of your placements are kicking in to help this happen. But with Saturn and Pluto happening here, this could be loss of, of freedom, loss of of something maybe at work, maybe you're losing time because you've got something emotionally going on, you've got something going on with a family member. Yeah, because it doesn't have to be your issue, maybe a family member has something going on and that's making you take time off of work in some way, shape or form, or you're so busy trying to figure out what to do and who to be down here that you've actually lost place of what's going on up here. Either way, this fourth house area, the domestic area of your life will heavily require some of your attention for the next few weeks to the next few months. But like I said, all the rest of these placements will come in to help you get done what you need to get done, okay? All right, as we get to the, where are we at? We're on the 13th. As we get to the 13th of the month, we see Venus hightailing it out of the energy of Aquarius, and she's gonna move over into the energy of Pisces. Now, Venus over here in Pisces is lovely. She's lighting up your sixth house, bringing some harmony to the daily routine. Um, Venus can also, in a daily routine, um, maybe you're at the gym and it gives you an opportunity to meet someone who's very nice at the gym. It's just a very harmonious um, energy. I do love this because if you do freelance work, Venus is actually trying to help you here. She could be bringing your creative side out very, very well and that can turn into some kind of income that comes back to you for sure. So really a lovely energy here. On the 16th of the month, everybody moves on, okay? So we've got Mercury heading out of the energy of Capricorn. The sun is moving out of the energy of Capricorn. They're moving over into the energies of Aquarius. And then on the 24th, we've got a new moon happening over in the energy of Aquarius as well. So this is going to begin to light up the fifth house zone. Now, whatever is happening here in this fourth house zone, the movement of these energies into your fifth house this is a house where you've learned something here and now you can put a fresh beginning to it here in the fifth house. It's an absolutely lovely energy. This is going to encourage some original thinking on your part, thinking outside of the box. Think like the innovator that this Uranian energy has been trying to help you become. At this new moon, plant those seeds of intention, right? What do you want this area to look like for you over the next four weeks? Where could you use some help in developing your romantic life, your business plan, something with your children, anything new that you're working on. Now, I do want to say too, when the sun comes into this energy of Aquarius, if it's felt like the domestic zone, the fourth house, even maybe even considering a move has been a little bit heavy and those slower moving planets feel like they're dragging their feet in your life, the sun helps to motivate you. It gives you a deep breath, some motivation, some whew, 
all right, we've got this. So use that energy well to get things done, to play, to celebrate, to laugh, to have joy in your life. Do something different, Libra, that allows you to express yourself. And remember how much play is actually available in life, especially with Mercury here to help you have some original or innovative thinking on how to get that done. Now, two days I want to make you mindful of as we end um, this particular month. On the 27th, Venus and um, Neptune are actually going to be traveling together. Now, I love them. I call them the Bopsy Twins because they're just good, you know? <laughs> they just like it to be good. They like the ease of things. They're very delicious and blissful together. So it's wonderful for creative work here artsy work, spiritual work, spiritualizing your daily routine, sitting down, meditating, asking your body what it needs. Body, what do we need right now to be happy, to be healthy, to be calm here in our minds, right? Wonderful for that. Not huge for making big decisions. This energy can be completely deceptive because you're making everything look and feel too good. Now on the 28th, so it's a foggy day. I wouldn't make big decisions on that day. Now on the 28th, Mars is going to come into the square with this Neptune Venus happiness. And he's saying, hey, wait a minute, you don't have all the facts. You don't have all the information. That square is going to put you under tension and show you that maybe there was a decision you were going to make or maybe there's a decision you feel under pressure to make. Um, you don't have all of the facts, but you do need to figure out what the information is. So the best solution I have to that for you is, yes, you may take some action, and the action may be information gathering, lean towards the Mars. What do you need to know? Who can help guide you with that information? Do you need to be taking care of a parent? And so you've got to ask questions. Is someone going into hospice? You've got to ask questions. Whatever it is, just make sure you use that square to gather your information on those particular days, okay? All right, my beautiful Libras, I think it's going to be a beautiful start to the year. Please keep me posted in the comment section down below how these things are playing out and manifesting for you. I hope to see you in the Astrology Hub Free Marathon. Also, Astrology 101 and 102, my classes, are kicking off in February as well. So hopefully you'll be signed up for everything and I'll see you along the way, okay? All right, you guys, I love you. Bye.